Back in Studio A with my guest this morning, as I mentioned, from San Juan Regional Medical Center. I want to welcome back to KSJE, Kemi Monarch, who is the Chief Nursing Officer at the hospital. Kemi, good morning. Happy New Year. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having us. You bet. Good to have you here. Also joining us here in the studio, new to KSJE, Kemi, I'm um, sorry, Brianna Lopez, the Talent Acquisition Coordinator with San Juan Regional Medical Center. Brianna, welcome to you. Thank you. Good morning. Good to have both of you here this morning to talk with me a bit about uh, job opportunities at, uh, at the hospital and uh, how they are um, available and what you are looking for this time of year. And I know you've got a special event coming up. In fact, the first one is tomorrow. And so, um, Brianna, can we start with there? Let's talk about this event that's planned for tomorrow. Of course. Um, so what ultimately what it is, is it's a speed interview event. It's a speed hiring event. Yeah. Um, we have one tomorrow. We also have one on the 26th. It's for our perioperative services. Um, you come in sign up, um, you speak with a recruiter who will be on site, and the managers will also be on site, they'll do your interview, um, and then you'll receive a conditional offer letter. Um, and then right there? In, right there on the oh, spot. If okay. they, yes, if they're, if they're interested in you. It is speedy. Um, it is very speedy. If they're interested in you, you will receive a conditional offer letter. Um, and then following that, once you're leaving, I will give you your next steps. Uh, most of the time, a lot of the people who are coming to these events have not applied yet, so they do still have to apply. So they receive a just an informational sheet with next steps on how to go about it. Um, gotcha. And then that recruiter's already keeping an eye out for their information and their names to come through their inbox. So. Okay. And you mentioned this was in a certain area of care, right? So explain that more to us, I guess. What types um, of things are we talking about then? So perioperative is um, endoscopy pre-op and PACU. Those are going to be the main areas of care that they are going to be doing this recruiting event for. This time, I do know that there are more planned for different areas of okay. nursing. I think well. I know endoscopy and pre-op, but I don't know PACU, PACU. is post, what does that mean? Uh, post anesthesia care unit. Okay. So it's um, after surgeries. It's Right. Gotcha. Pre-op, post-op kind of thing, right? So both. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, now I get it. Thank you. Um, and so you've got openings, I guess, right away um, and, and need, needs to fill right away yes. in these areas? Yes. Yes, we do. Got Very. you. We are have, in need. We have um, not only positions open for registered nurses, we have positions open for um, sterile processing techs, right, mm -hmm. and as well as surgical techs. So uh, people who have a heart for health care and uh, perioperative services, we'd love to have the chance to talk to you. Right. And so those folks who come to this event as well tomorrow mm -hmm. then, if, if they're interested in that kind of work as well? They are invited. We welcome them. Please come. The event's going to be held at the uh, Workforce Excellence Center on campus. Campus, right mm -hmm. and um, it's a, a, a place where you can just walk in parking is easy walk in there'll be people there to um, receive you and that sort of thing get the process started okay what time does it start so it starts at 11 okay 11 a.m. I'm so sorry I'm, the <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting up. you on the spot <laughs> it is uh, 11 to 3 okay um, and the address is 800 West Maple uh, Farmington New Mexico and you, they can park right in front of our building in the 10 minute parking or the applicant parking, either, either one of those. Um, they won't get towed away. Right. <laughs> um, and we do, yeah, like Cami said, we have those types of positions, also patient care tech positions open. Gotcha. Um, so positions that you don't have to have any spe special licensure or certification for. Well, and positions that um, are maybe a first position in healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, we also want that group and others to know that we're very committed to the continuing education journey that uh, people might be interested in. And so we've got extensive educational and scholarshiping opportunities. And so for those who are uh, entering our profession in um, those areas for the first time, know that we'd like to talk to you about that initial role, but also what your dreams and aspirations are as you develop uh, as a healthcare professional, because San Juan Regional Medical Center is really poised to um, to support you every step along that way. Right. And so does that include maybe some tuition assistance down the road and things like that if it, someone had higher aspirations? Exactly. So it's um, tuition reimbursement, tuition support. We also uh, affiliate with other organizations that offer and support scholarshiping opportunities. So uh, 
want to be sure that we're exploring those for people who would like to um, grow professionally. And we also support and encourage certification along the way so that um, so that those who are practicing whatever the discipline they're practicing are practicing at the highest level for the benefit of patients. So uh, San Juan Regional Medical Center also supports that as well. Right. Very good. So again, this event is tomorrow, but you're having another one in a couple of more weeks. So if folks don't quite have their act together for tomorrow, they can maybe set aside some time on the 26th. Same type of thing, right? Yep. Same same jobs that you're looking for to fill and same speed event, right? Yep. Yes, it, sir. And I would say including the operating room. So the list that you see uh, for tomorrow's event are uh, three of the four perioperative services area and the OR, uh, I believe, is going to be included or at least the focus in uh, that 26th event but nurses who and, and also support staff who have a heart for working in the operating room uh, in teams with uh, physicians who are actually doing surgery on patients we'd welcome uh, those applicants as well okay so again tomorrow 11 to 3 mm -hmm. um, near the hospital but it's not at the hospital it's kind of it looks, sounds like across the street yes okay yes. 800 West Maple mm -hmm. is what it's you said the Center for Workforce Excellence thank you and then uh, again on the 26 which will be a Friday same time 11 mm -hmm. to 3 Three? Yep. Same location. Yep. Same location, same time, everything. Okay. So folks can come in. And I guess, as you mentioned, it's really designed to get folks in and out mm -hmm. and, and set up for the next step and to get them onboarded pretty quickly, I guess. And mm -hmm. that's your job, right, Brianna? Yep. With folks that come in. What would the time frame be, I guess, from, let's say, tomorrow? If I walk in and say, I'd like to see what opportunities are available, take me through that process. So right now, um, our first open orientation class is uh, February 12th. Um, okay. That's our first open one. So if they come in tomorrow and they get a conditional offer, their conditional offer will be set for a start date of February 12th. Um, then I reach out to them, I get in contact with them, get them set up for an onboarding appointment to come in, do their background checks, um, their drug screening and all of that. So Got you. We're, in the hopes that we get them in and get them working as quick as possible. Right. And, but then it comes back to, to me or the applicant to fill out that application, as you mentioned, and to yes. do some paperwork and get mm -hmm. you whatever you need to get me or the applicant ready to go mm -hmm. um, yes. on, at that event in February. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it's a pretty quick process, or you've tried to make it as quick as you can. Yes, we do. We do try to make it as quick as possible. Um, our orientations are biweekly, um, mm -hmm. so we, we try to you know, start people as quick as we possibly can. Right. So. And as Kemi mentioned, this, these jobs that are available are kind of designed for folks that maybe don't have any other licensure or want to just get entry level into the healthcare industry. That's kind of how they're designed. At least some of them, right? Okay. Brianna, the... Um, the, the central, the sterile processing techs, as well as the surgical techs. Okay. There are programs right here at San Juan College That's that true. offer education in those two disciplines. So we'd welcome those who um, are looking at graduation and want to come um, practice their skill to join us at San Juan Regional Medical Center. And then we recognize Oftentimes, that's not the end of the journey for that person. It is a first opportunity into the professional life of a healthcare uh, professional, and so we want to be sure we're supporting them in that with that step, uh, as well as the next step that they that they would like to take in their healthcare careers. Got you. Very good. And of course, it's it's a great partnership, I think, between San Juan Regional Medical Center and San Juan College to train these workers here, and then have them be able to just work. work down the street, literally almost, um, at the hospital and start their healthcare career. That's exactly right. And uh, San Juan Regional Medical Center is uh, so appreciative of our collaboration with San Juan uh, College and the, the healthcare disciplines when it comes to the most recent graduating class of registered nurses. Uh, we've had job applications that have been uh, filed by 10 of the 11 graduates. So really appreciate the opportunity to get to know those students as they're in our clinic setting and then are just so grateful they're uh, giving San Juan Regional uh, Medical Center a chance to be their first employer as they graduate from uh, San Juan College. Right, very true. And I know a lot of economic development folks always talk about the need to maybe keep young people or recent graduates in the community working, not like leaving town to find a job somewhere else. And this is one of those examples of it working out very well. Exactly. The University of uh, New Mexico does a study every year uh, with the healthcare workforce pipeline. Right now in San Juan County, there is 347 nurses short 
of the per capita based needs that other communities enjoy. We're also 80 EMT short. And so our supply of um, incoming healthcare professionals in a number of disciplines is in a, in a negative category. So we want to keep as many um, students and growing healthcare professionals who are in San Juan County practicing in a healthcare facility here. And certainly we'd love for San Juan Regional Medical Center to be on their list of potential employers. Right. So folks are in school right now in any of these areas, they'll have a job waiting for them, probably even before they start walking across that stage for the, with their diploma, right, when the, when the time comes. That happens thanks to um, our talent acquisition colleagues who work with uh, new employees to get them ready from initial application to scheduling and orientation uh, date. But yes, we uh, invite all uh, mission-minded, patient-centered healthcare professionals to come and join us. Right. Right, very true. And, Cammy, you and I were talking before we came on the other this morning a bit about salaries and things like that for positions at San Juan Regional Medical Center in the, in the nursing field, which is, of course, where you mm -hmm. work most, uh, most often. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about, about that because the numbers maybe that folks hear at first glance may not be the number that they actually end up making as far, as far as salary goes once they sign on and get on board. Uh, that, that's right, Scott. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this because at San Juan Regional Medical Center, we do have a base rate um, that is an initial foundational number that is used to establish an annual pay rate, mm -hmm. which is kind of a stacked um, formula or calculation based on uh, the opportunities that any given employee will choose to pursue. And so uh, we do have a, a weekend program and for perioperative services, those areas are open 24 seven. And so we're looking for a uh, staff who would be willing to work weekends. And so let's say a registered nurse is, um, is willing to work weekends and he or she wants to work days. With the series of differentials that we offer and other incentives, that nurse on days on the weekend can earn almost $122,000. Uh, if that nurse would be willing to work nights, uh, that nurse could earn as much as uh, over $132,000. And that's without including any of our um, uh, floating diffs, our preceptor diffs, our charge nurse diff, without a, uh, without a um a, a second of overtime, and it doesn't that doesn't include any kind of our on-call features, but it's an annual pay rate that is stacked, mm -hmm. starting with that base uh, that base rate. So I think sometimes um, uh, applicants walk away thinking it's that base rate only. That's it. That's it. That's not it at San Juan Regional Medical Center. We'd love to have a chance to talk to people about where they are. Because some of these opportunities depends on if I have a certification. San Juan Re Regional Medical Center is an organization that supports as many as three certifications. And so with each one of those, there's an additional layer of compensation that gets added. And so it is a meaningful uh, contribution to the annual pay rate that is far different from uh, the, the base rate. Sometimes the base rate can, st can start in a way that equals like $65,000 annually. But look, that's same nurse when everything else is added up is looking at $121,000 for uh, days, weekends, or uh, $132,000 for um, for nights in wow. perioperative areas. So it is substantial, right. uh, the difference between a base rate calculation and an annual pay rate right. conversation. So I'd be happy to address that further in any other forum if that would be helpful. Okay, very, very good. Well, and I'm it's early, but I still know, and I'm, I'm not a math guy, but that's uh, that's almost double, if not right. double, the salary that you're talking about, from the right. base to what you would make if you wanted to if you wanted to work, and I guess that's a choice of the applicant, right, of the right. individual. If you want to work weekends and want to work nights, there's extra compensation available if you choose to do that. Exactly, and there's a, um, uh, the addition that we've made this past year was the uh, to a. Uh, uh, to implement a BSN differential. So for uh, nurses who pursued not only their ADN, but they've achieved uh, graduation as a BSN, uh, there's a new diff for that. And so if um, if the rates I just spoke to were for BSNs, the ADN um, annual pay rates are over almost 119,000 and uh, the NICE rate is uh, over 129,000. So it's the difference between what a 
BSN prepared nurse would make and an ADN prepared nurse is just a few thousand dollars. Um, but the earning potential is just significant. And uh, listen, I would love to uh, know that in our perioperative services areas, we've got a critical ma a mass of nurses and other healthcare professionals who choose to show up not only today, but next year and then next year uh, so that our patients get the benefit of that continuity. Right, very true. And you talked about certifications, and from our earlier conversation, it sounds like if somebody maybe would like more certifications, the San Juan Regional Medical Center can help them achieve that and That's get them. That's right. Uh, we can help them with the educational requirements that it takes to be eligible for certification exams, um, as well as when they pass, they begin to get the, um, the d differential associated with that. And that's before they even accumulate any hours of work. It's walking in the door. Right. Very, very true. Brianna, I want to come back to you a little bit and ask you about some of these things that that Cammie was talking about with getting this base pay, but then also being able to talk to potential em employees about, you know, that's just the base. These other things kind of get added on top of that if you so choose to uh, to do these extra extra duties like coming in on the weekends or working nights or, or whatever the case may be. That's, I guess, really important for folks to understand. It is, um, and our recruiters, they do a great job of explaining that to them and letting them know the options that they have. Um, but I think the you know, one of the biggest issues is they don't try to hear that. They just get stuck on that base rate. Um, and so if they would open up and take it in and just listen to that, they would have a great potential and a great earning potential at San Juan Regional. Right, right, which is important as well. It is. And, and, I, and I want to ask you both a little bit about competition, being being competitive and things like that. As we, as you said, Kim, you mentioned how many um, folks we are short in San Juan County, EMTs and nurses and things like that. I imagine we're not alone right. in this type of thing. Each community probably in New Mexico or across the nation, I think, is suffering from shortages of these types of positions. So do you feel that the hospital is competitive when you talk about salaries and things like that? I do, especially when I put it in the context that I've just, that I've just gone through. If right. I were to talk about the base rate only, uh, it would be a different answer, but that's not what's offered at San Juan Regional Medical Center. I do keep my eye on national trends, and uh, uh, New Mexico is the third highest uh, state for um, cost of living adjusted pay for nurses, third. Hmm. And uh, so I'm glad I'm in that state, right? Right. But even statewide, our mean um, our mean annual uh, salary earnings for nurses is eighty five thousand dollars. So if you look at the compare that to the numbers we just went through, we're substantially uh, about that uh, that mean that mean rate and there was an update that was done that was in uh, June there was an update that was done in uh, December and it showed uh, that the median rate in New Mexico was uh, almost eighty two thousand dollars so it went down a bit uh, but not at San Juan Regional Medical Center okay good to know and that's I guess significant as well and probably important for recruitment and, and when you go out and talk to folks like me or others about the salaries I mean it, it's important that I guess you can offer maybe a competitive rate for folks maybe to keep them either here around their family and friends mm -hmm. rather than having to travel 400 miles away and they may make the same but maybe it's a higher cost of living or maybe right. it's another different situation who knows right exactly uh, we'd love to keep um, uh, health, as many healthcare professionals in this county as possible uh, our um, our fellow citizens need need us to be there for them and so San Juan Regional Medical Center is um, a cornerstone in that uh, industry and we seek to have a, a the critical mass of healthcare professionals that this community need this community needs Right, right. And can I ask you a bit about the larger healthcare industry as a, as a whole, if there are all these shortages? I mean, how are hospitals and, and other facilities meeting this um, need for, for healthcare workers? Are they hiring more travelers? Are they being able to kind of supplement in places where they really need folks or yeah, what's the situation? We are using um, far more travelers than any of us would like for, um, for us to be using. And uh, I would, while we appreciate them, uh, their willingness to come and help us for weeks, we need people who are going to be helping us for months to years to decades. And it's that continuity that you mentioned. Right, and stabilization of patient care environment 
environments. If I can trust that Brianna and I are going to show up today, next year, um, and the years following to work together, then there's a camaraderie that results, and uh, that's harder to achieve when people are rotating in and out of practice areas on a 13-week basis. But I think travelers have been the cornerstone of keeping doors open uh, at, through the pandemic and as we've continued to recover. The other thing that we're doing is um, we're trading people from healthcare organization to healthcare organization. That's happening within pharm the Farmington community as well as in our surrounding communities. And so we'd like to be think that we're um, doing things that bring new people into our um, community so that we're not just simply trading uh, people from agency to agency for a period of time. Because that's not stabilizing either. Right. So you hire someone from some other facility, so your gain is their loss, and it really right. doesn't help the overall picture, I guess, of the community. Exactly right. Is what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I get it. And so that's that's really important. And that's an issue, I think, happening even, again, in other places, not just Farmington. We're not right. unique in this issue. It's a nationwide um, a paradox that we find ourselves in. And, of course, it's driven by... Um, by the healthcare industry wanting to provide the best care for patients. And so um, we just got to figure out a way to cultivate more uh, healthcare professionals in their education. Uh, and then our job at San Juan Regional Medical starts not only in the on the early days of recruitment, but once somebody is goes through the orientation process that Brianna leads, our job as clinical leaders is to retain them, right? So that they choose to work at San Juan Regional Medical Center for for decades, and we have people there at the hospital who've done just that. We just need to replicate it for this generation and the next generation. Right, and that is the key, I guess, is yeah. what you're what you're talking about. And I wanted to ask you mentioned a little bit about that with folks that maybe you're maybe thinking about getting into the field and making it a career for 20, 25, 30 mm -hmm. years or more. Um, if someone is maybe in in high school and maybe thinking about health care, I mean, the prospects for five years from now, ten years from now. Are certainly, I think, pretty pretty strong. I they mean, are. look at me; I'm not getting any younger, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need some care any day now. But uh, it's important for folks to know that this is a growth area. I think yep. for the future, it's a growth industry nationwide. It's listed as one of the top growth opportunities for um, for young people to consider. And um, you know, we're going to uh, really work at uh, creating awareness around our emergency services program. Uh, so around transporting patients and ambulances, our helicopter after our uh, fixed wing aircraft in ways that we hope will appeal to um, Farmington's high school students that will cause them to give serious consideration to joining us in those uh, areas as well. Um, but the future is exciting and um, there's a lot of potential and boy, we wanna make sure that the next generation of patients at San Juan Regional Medical Center have the care they need. Right, right. And again, these salaries are good, high, you know, salaries for folks. And I think that's another thing that we really um, want to talk more about because not every job that's available in, in our community or any community pays as well maybe as jobs like this. It certainly takes some knowledge and some education, but you're rewarded for that, it sounds like to me. I, I, I really believe so. I don't know of another... I mean, if you think about the, uh, the mean or median pay rate in the state of New Mexico, I honestly don't know another employer that has annual pay rates um, in the 121 to $132,000 range other than what's offered at San Juan Regional Medical Center. Yep. It's not radio, I can assure you of that. <laughs> it's not radio. So there you are. Um, before we run out of time, Brianna, I want to come back to you a little bit about some of the things that you talk to folks about as they are coming on board. You talk a little bit, of, I think, about the mission and, you know, and, and I think kind of the the whole climate and, and camaraderie at San Juan Regional Medical Center, I think that's really important for folks to, to know kind of, you know, how the organization operates and, and what your standards are and things along that line. Is that part of your message? It is. Um, that is something that is really talked about during the actual orientation that uh -huh. they go through. Um, but we are a mission uh, or a values-driven organization, um, and we hold our values very closely to us. Um, and so that's what we look for in candidates and look for in, you know, new employees. And when we talk about those and when we look at the pe and our new employees, you can see which core value of ours actually really resonates with them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, and it's not something 
I think that they think about coming in initially, um, but when we really start to talk about our core values and what they mean to us and as, as an organization and how we uh, brought them in, and we look at our employees and they're, you know, you can just see it on their face and they, they think, you know what, that one, that one really resonates with me. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a good thing to see. And it's, it's important. It is very important. It is very important. And important to maybe talk about from day one. It is, it is. And it's important for our patients as well, um, for them to know that our caregivers are there because they want to be there and for their, for their best care. Right, right. So. Very good. So for tomorrow, again, let's recap a little bit about this speed interviewing event. I call it speed dating, but it's different. <laughs> um, but uh, the idea is from 11 to 3, um, tomorrow, January 11th, um, you will be able to walk into uh, your office mm -hmm. across the street from the hospital yes. and, uh, and get set up with a potential job. Yes. It sounds yes. like to me. Yep. In yep. I don't know, half an hour, 20 yes. minutes? Yep, and everybody is encouraged to come in. It, this is not, again, like Cammie said, not just for licensed nurses. Um, so even for our support staff, it's everybody's encouraged to come in and speak with a recruiter and speak with one of the managers that are there if they're interested in that department, and we can get them moving in the right direction. Yeah. So Very good. And again, 11 to 3 uh, tomorrow, January 11th, for our radio audience. But again, this is same event is going to be held on the 26th, which will be a Friday in a couple of weeks. Same location, same time, 11 to 3. Yeah. You're really looking for these endoscopy, pre-op, and post-op positions, but it's open to more than just that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. All yeah. right. Excellent. Thank you, both of you, for coming in this morning and talking with me. Yes, Appreciate it very, very much. Thank you Thanks for, for having, having us. us. You're very welcome. My guest this morning from San Juan Regional Medical Center with me on KSJE.